Previously on MasterChef, the Tag Team Challenge. Grant, you get to pick the teams. Nice guy's gone. Switch! Let's go! Go, Charles! We've got to do this. Jennifer and Charles are in trouble. Yeah, too much oil. It's Disaster Chef! It's so terrible. Taste-wise, flawless. Just masterclass right there. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Congratulations, MD and Sav. <laughs> So who made the pasta? I made the pasta. That looks embarrassing. Jennifer, say goodbye to Charles and head back to your station. Love you, Charles. Good luck, everyone. Tonight, it's a familiar challenge, but oh with a big catch. Under each mystery box is a different fish. What the f am I going to do? MD and Sav get to choose two cooks who must swap fish. <laughs> Your target is getting bigger than the MasterChef logo on the doors. If you can't handle it, you're not supposed to be here. This is not easy. Damn. Is this your filet? It could be. <laughs> I hope not. What did you do in an hour? I know that I'm in trouble. His overconfidence got the best of him. Somebody's going home, and you've got one foot out the door. <laughs> Right. Big one, top ten around the corner. Auto leg, auto leg. This is going to be one of the trickiest, slimiest challenges so far. Oh, Woo. That was, oh that's, nice. a, that's a big one. Nice. Welcome back, guys. I don't think I can pick that up. We've seen a lot of mystery box challenges this far, and this box has to be the biggest mystery box that I have seen. That is huge. So I know what's under there has got to be something that is very challenging. Welcome back, guys. We are almost at the top 10 stage. Oh, wow. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Congratulations are definitely in order for Sav and MD. You have immunity tonight, which means you've already earned spots in the top 10. Woo -hoo. OK, by the end of this evening, we will have the top 10 locked in, which means that whoever cooks the worst dish tonight will miss it by this much. Now, here's the good news. Whoever cooks the best dish tonight will earn the coveted immunity pin and be safe from elimination across the next challenge. Plus, you'll get a huge advantage next time round as well. You want it, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, chef. yes, chef. As you can see, tonight you have another mystery box challenge. And for this one, we're doing something out of the ordinary. Let me tell you a little secret. Under each mystery box is... A different fish. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you will not know what you're cooking until you've lifted your box. Right, we ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. All of you, go fish. Let's go. Let's go. Good luck. Let's get it. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you this one. <laughs> okay. Tonight's mystery box is big. So big, it's like having Master Jeff Jr. back with Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what are you hoping for? An Alaskan king salmon? That would be amazing, but I'm not sure that's going to happen, so maybe some trout? Gotcha. Trout, salmon, and a stool. <laughs> Reagan, what are you comfortable with? Actually, not comfortable with any fish, because I'm highly allergic. Oh, no. Uh, what, uh, really? Yeah. So you're up against it either way tonight, right? I am. Ooh. Wayne, what fish would you love under that box to get you into the top ten? Well, we're pretty landlocked in Columbus, Ohio, so yeah. I'm just hoping it's something I've seen before. OK. Everybody ready? We're On ready. the count of three, lift your boxes. Oh, my gosh. One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, lift. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's ugly. <laughs> Striped bass. Mackerel? Mackerel. What the heck are you? There is the big, ugly mug of a John Dory staring back at me. I have never seen this fish before. I have never worked with this fish before. What the f am I going to do? Grant, you want to trade? Absolutely not. OK. Reagan, what, what is that thing on there? It's a sardine. The sardine, that's a tough one. They're just so difficult to cook. Of course. Kennedy, I love that smile. I mean, look at you. <laughs> what did you get? I got salmon. That is a home run, right? Uh, absolutely. James. Got the mackerel. Mackerel. <laughs> Love that. You put the hip hop into mackerel. You feel me? Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's related to the tuna family. Mackerel, super delicious. Tricky to get right, though. Wayne, what'd you get? Uh, I do not have a luxury fish. I've got catfish. Yes, you do. Says you. 
people in the South might mm-hmm. disagree with you. Exactly. Right, um, Sav and MD, are you happy with the fishies that everyone's got? Mm-mm. Some of y'all got off way too easy. <laughs> oh. Well, tonight you've both got a big advantage because you each get to choose two cooks who must swap their fish. <laughs> Ladies, do me a favor. Have a good look at the fish on those boards. Sav, my girl from the South, please pick me. Please, Jesus, pick me. I don't want to go home. This sardine, and I'm going home today. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Franzino. <laughs> Love you, ladies. Oh, yeah? How much? <laughs> a whole lot. <laughs> it's a nice halibut you got there, Colby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Real nice. Okay, MD, you're going to kick this off. Who are we going to select to swap their fish and why? I think we're heading towards top 10, and there's a saying that if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. I'm kind of in that mode at the moment. So I'm going to have Grant switch his striped bass with James Mackerel. Wow. Because Mackerel is a really interesting fish, I think it's a very flavorful fish. MD. Um, it's one of the most difficult fish out there tonight. I think Grant should be able to handle it. Wow. And if he can't, then he's not supposed to be here. Grant seems so comfortable with his fish, and James was my teammate, so I kind of want to help him out. Grant. Yes, Chef. Another target on your back, man. How do you feel? I'm excited for the challenge. I'm, I'm here to fight. I'm here to win, so you can give me whatever you need. I'm going to throw it down on the plate. James, come on, let's be honest. You didn't even know how to pronounce the fish, let alone cook Facts. it. You're right, I, did, I didn't. <laughs> uh, how does sea bass sound to you? Uh, it sounds great. Well, Grant, please switch stations with James. Let's go. Oh, boy. Mm. MD, nice choices. <laughs> OK, Sav, give us an insight. Where are we going? So there is one person in this competition who has been putting out top three level dishes mm. throughout the whole competition, and mm. it's kind of pissing me off. And I think they got off way too easy. Are you looking at me? And one of my region mates really got something that they're not super excited about. So we got Kennedy with the salmon swapping with Reagan and that little sardine back there. OK. Ladies, switch. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Oh, much better. Even though you don't cook fish, how excited are you now with the salmon? This is something I'm a little more familiar with and something that I can at least manipulate into a great dish. Yep. Kennedy. Yeah. Your target is getting bigger than the MasterChef logo on the <laughs> doors know. there now. Everybody's coming for me. You've gone from the most desirable to one of the most feared. Uh, I feel for you, Kennedy. It is what it is. Ladies, very clever on the picks. OK, guys, you will have one hour to fillet and cook your fish dishes. Right, the very best of luck. Are you all ready? Yes, yes, yes. Good. Your 60 minutes start now. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Come on guys. Come on, Lizzie, let's go. Don't get it. Be right, careful, let's go. Jennifer. Be careful. Jennifer, let's go. <laughs> Do not fall. <laughs> breadcrumbs, red breadcrumbs. Be cream. What's up? What the hell is the camera? Just sugar, granulated sugar. Thank you, MD, for giving me a fish that hopefully I can do something with. She's from the West. We region oh. buddies. Oh, Roman, I mean, let's go. So I'm hoping I can reel this one in. Good, James. Let's go. Right, five minutes gone, 55 minutes to go. Look at that. So obviously this is not a fish butchery challenge, but no. what are the obstacles to getting around a whole fish and making it something you want to use in a dish? <sighs> butcher this fish. You have to allow for at least 15 minutes there, Joe. Yeah. Getting the decent-sized portion, filleting it, and then pin-boning it, taking the skin off, skin on, scoring it, marinating it. Damn. This is not easy. Listen, if you've got a big fish, whether it's round or flat, it's great because you've got multiple portions. The real targets and I are those with tiny fish, yep. like the mackerel, for instance, that Grant's got. I would not want to be in his position right now. His hand's so big, I can't see the damn fish. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, or the sardines that well, Kennedy's okay, got. So sardines, you're not butchering anything. You may be just cleaning out the guts. You could take out the center bone and sort of almost like butterfly them if they're going to go down the stuffing route. Or traditionally, they'll be kept whole. All right, here we go. My question was, Sav, just being very kind and generous to Reagan, mm. or was she really, really trying to hurt Kennedy? Yeah, I think she's concerned about Kennedy's longevity in this competition, and she also has a lot of love for the South. She mentioned that she's still my region mate, even though we've gone to another element of, of this competition. 
Oh, look at Colby's doing good. She said she took the skin out first. Okay, Colby, looking good. Thank you, Sal. Nice work. I can cook it first and then take the skin off. No. What's up for when it's 86 to head? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How's uh, Izzy doing? I don't know. It looks rough. All right, I can do it. Right on time here. Just get these little bones out. We'll start with that. So Reagan, who is terribly allergic to fish, has got a double-edged sword tonight because she's always provided those amazing big bold flavors. But if she's never cooked fish before, then she could be in trouble tonight. That's a big old fish. I'm worried. Yeah. She needs bigger gloves. She needs dang dishwashing gloves. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. Oh my God. My worst fear is cooking fish. Remember, Reagan, just one stunning portion, right? Yes, sir. I am fearful of one, dying, and two, um, not being able to cook it appropriately because I can't taste it. That's stressing me out. Poor thing. Yeah. But I cannot let this fish beat me. If I go home today and I am this close to being in the top 10, I'm gonna kick my own ass. <sighs> Focus. <sighs> Right, so, tricky challenge, this fish mystery box. OK. Someone's getting the amazing immunity pin. Sadly, someone will be leaving the competition. And most importantly, just around the corner is the top, top ten. ten. Now, obviously, with fish in an hour, you have the luxury of time, right? Because after the butchering, the fish cooking part is minimal. And that's why I'm going to be very critical about the garnishes, because you're right, Joe. There's sufficient time to really evolve the dish. Do some cayenne here. 15 minutes gone, 45 minutes remaining. Come on, guys. Let's go. We did it. We're good on time. OK, Colby. Yes, Chef. Halibut. Come on, what a dream. Yes, Look sir. At that it is a dream. I'm excited I got it. What's the dish? Where are we going? Uh, yep, so I'm going to do a harissa spice halibut with a tabbouli and a butternut squash and carrot puree with brown butter and heavy cream. I'm making it because Houston has a very big Mediterranean scene, and I kind of want to show my diversity in this competition. Love that. How are you going to cook the halibut? Because it's very unforgiving. There's no yep. fat in that. I'm going to sear it really quickly, and then I'm going to turn the heat down the low and just cook it for about seven minutes. We've got less of the safety net of the regions now, and it's yes, now sir. actually down to the individuals. How does that make you feel? I really like it now because we're not constrained to our region. So no. if I have the best dish, it'll be up there. Love that. Uh, don't overcook that halibut, yes? Yes, sir, I got dish you. Dish sounds good. Very good. Okay. Okay, perfect. I have the Branzino fish today, and I am making a cauliflower puree along with a beautiful blood orange or blanc sauce. It's a very pretty yeah. color. It is. Mmm. There we go. Doing good, doing good, doing good. Paprika. What is James doing over there? Ooh, I was getting. Hi, man. Hey, what up, amigo? You had the mackerel, and then you got this lightning bolt of love from up top. That's yes. true. <laughs> How happy were you to get the sea bass? I'm very happy because I don't know what to do with that other fish. And you got a good fillet out of it? Is this your fillet? Yes. So you kept the skin on, which is a good strategy. Yeah, right? I like that. And you scored it as well. Yes, I Make did. sure that all that beautiful heat can cook the fillet evenly. What else you got going on here? Uh, I'm going to do a cauliflower and parsnip puree. I'm going to saute these mushrooms with some white wine and roasted cherry tomatoes. Do you know the concept of using white wine in cuisine and cooking, that white wine has alcohol in it, right? Yeah. And in food, you cooked. don't want to taste the alcohol. When you see people flambe stuff, that yeah. is the alcohol burning out, because really all you want from the wine yeah. is the flavor and acidity. Gotcha. Good luck. OK. What do I use to open a bottle of wine? You should have a wine key in your drawer. There should be one in my drawer? In drawer. OK, thank you. Miss Target. Hello. Or Miss Kennedy. <laughs> Miss Kennedy. Uh, you got excited with the salmon first. Uh, I was excited about the salmon, but actually I'm, I'm more excited about the sardines now. This is something that's a little bit harder to work with, and I want to prove to you that I know what I'm doing. If they keep trying to take me out like this and I keep coming back stronger every week, I mean, it's, you're just making me a stronger chef. That's all you're doing. Love that. And how are you going to elevate it, though? Um, I'm going to do, like, a whole fried sardine with a panzanella salad and fresh herbs, and then a tomato, raisin, and white wine sauce. Good. Elevate those sardines, please. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Joe, 
Yes. I have a question for you. Yeah. I've never opened a bottle of wine. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever said. You need a corkscrew. This, this is called a corkscrew. Okay. Oh, she's so cute opening the thing. So wait, oh. does she not know You how got to open? it, Lizzie. This is her first time opening a bottle of wine. You go like this in your hand. You put the thing in like you're putting in a needle. Mm -hmm. Twist, twist, twist. And pull. Go ahead, you do it. Hold this part down. Lift. Lift. There you go. Lift. Keep on going. Yay! Yay! Oh, thank you. Yay. Hey, MD. I can't wait to be up there next time. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. Thanks. Drugs. Chef Ramsey, how are you? Man, you're getting dealt some dysfunctional uh, cards in I this am. competition. But I'm going to make it work today. Uh, where are we going with this mackerel? Because it's a tough one. Exactly. So I want to make sure this dish is all about mackerel. So right. I'm making a stock right here out of mackerel carcass, smoking a couple of the fillets now. I'm going to broil those, turn them into a mousse. So it's like a smoked mackerel pate. Yes. Right, but that's not the dishes. That's, that's not the dish. No, the dish is going to be the fillets over some sauteed kohlrabi greens. But this sounds like two dishes in one. It could be. Make sure you don't get confused with trying to stick an appetizer into an entree. Sure. And whilst being in the competition at the halfway point, what are you missing the most from home? You know, uh, I miss my, my wife and my son so much. Uh, I look at this every day. This is for my mother. It says, believe in you like I do. She believes in me so much. And I got to put my heart on the plate today. I love that. Focus. Get yourself into the top 10. Be careful on that mackerel. Absolutely. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Oh, yeah, girl. Cooking with that. There go. A little bit more. Hello, Bryn. Hello. How are you? So, Bryn, you got the famous John Dory. I have never seen this. I have never cooked this. This is something that is, is, is usually cooked whole in, in Michelin star restaurants and then actually deboned and served okay. table side. Okay. And of course, you can remove the fillets, which you, I think you've done really well. Okay, good. What else is going to entail? Um, so I'm doing like lemon and fresh herb. I'm making a garlic shallot cream. I'm doing some grilled scallion and pan patty squash. I'm making a little light couscous salad. This dish is inspired by my husband. We fell in love fishing. I think he'd be really, really proud of this dish. So you're going to sear the fish. I'm going to try it. Put salt on it, yes. season it, give it a nice sear, get it brown, and then try it. Yes. I would do like 30 to 40 seconds on each side. Thank yeah. you. And then you can also finish that. in the oven as well. I was thinking okay. that as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Coming in hot. <sighs> Spinach. Guys, we're coming down to halfway. OK. So Kennedy got sardines. Um, she's going to bread them, stuff them, and fry them over a panzanella salad. If she can actually pull that off, it might be the dish of the night. Dang, that looks good. I want to eat it. I love fried fish. And like sardines, fried sardines, ugh. So James has the striped bass, and he's going to do a fillet with a puree of parsnips, some cauliflower, and sautéed mushrooms. That's looking good. Is he relieved he didn't get the mackerel? James is thrilled because striped bass is a pretty common fish, easy to cook. Let's see if he can pull off some sides and condiments that really exalt it. Mm. That's perfect. So Grant, as you know, got James's mackerel. Come on. It sounds like there's two dishes going on. First of all, he's making like a mackerel pate. Pate. Yeah, the and that, that like is, a mousse. Now that is ambitious. And he's taking the bones and the carcass and he's making like a broth. Nah. Traditionally, we don't use yeah, yeah. the bones for yeah. broth. It's oily. I wonder if he's making a stock. I don't know about that. After talking to Gordon, I'm a little worried with what I have going, but I'm a little too far into it to kind of changed past at this point. So my hope is that I can maybe prove Gordon wrong, that it didn't sound like a cohesive dish at first, but I know how to make things work in the end. So I'm a little worried right now, but I just have to keep trudging forward and really hope it works out at this point. Interesting. It's weird. Oh my God. Come on. Guys, 20 minutes to go. That fish doesn't need to be cooked at the last minute. Don't overcook your fish. Yes, chef. Let's go, guys. I'm curious about Lizzie's direction. All right, Lizzie. Hello. We're expecting big things from you as a woman from Alaska. How often do you get fish and you actually prepare it? My freezer is completely stocked with salmon and halibut, so we probably have it almost every other night. Cool. So you're familiar with fish cooking. I'm very familiar with cooking with fish, but maybe not this kind. You would never find a red snapper in Alaska. No. So what's your idea for this fish? I am doing a pan-seared red snapper with a orange saffron sauce and charred bok choy. Ooh, be careful with saffron, right? Yes. If you use too much of it, it could taste very soapy, like detergent. Okay. Good luck. 
I'm worried about that. Yeah. Go. Mm, that's good. Okay. Right, uh, Wayne, tell yes. me about the fish, catfish. I'm doing a blackened catfish over a Cajun potato mash, and I'm making a fresh remoulade, and uh, wow. I've got some pickled uh, veggies to sprinkle around. Good. You don't look like a big catfish lover. No. It's not your neck of the woods, and no. you're sort of landlocked, right? This goes back to my college days at LSU, and uh, when I fell in love with food, catfish was on the menu there. Love that. Uh, if you didn't make it into the top 10, how would that make you feel? I would be absolutely crushed, Chef. Getting the apron was my first goal, top 10 is my second, yes. winning's my third, so we're almost halfway there. And how's Wayne changed? Because I'm not saying you were cocky at the beginning, but you're yeah. definitely assured. But now you see yeah. more of a wannabe pupil as opposed to be a wannabe chef. Master Chef Kitchen is a very humbling place, Chef. So hopefully I'm here long enough to uh, learn as much as I can. Yeah, good luck, Thank Wayne. You. Dang, it smells awesome. That's what we were looking for. 17 minutes. Get the flavor going. Ooh, that looks good. Thank you, baby. How'd you get through that salmon, all right? I'm still working. So you season the salmon. You got a beautiful fillets there. You got a Thank pan you. sear, and then the devil's work is done. Then you can go to your strengths, which are happening here, right? Yes. What do you got here? So I'm making a, a classic fish and grits with polenta and a spicy tomato sauce. Being severely allergic to, to fish, how hard is this challenge for you? This is a very hard challenge for me because I like to taste everything. If you start to see any milky substance come on, that's called albumin, and okay. that means it's been overcooked. Okay. Now you're on the okay. right track. I'll get some nice oil in the pan, start it skin side down, get it nice and crispy. Yep. Yep. There you go. Okay. Good Thank luck. you, Chef. God, that's so hard. You can't taste it. 10 minutes remaining. 50 gone, 10 minutes remaining. Now it's time to cook fish. Now it's time to cook fish. Oh. Whew, I hate waiting until the last minute on protein. It's so stressful. Whew. Okay. That skin coming off, Colby? A few of them are. I got another one going just in case. It looks good. All right, Colby. What is that? A tabule. You sure you want to put that in there hot? It's going to discolor your parsley. Fluff this up a little bit with okay. a fork. And then you, you call you call or peel off it. Cool it. Cool it off a little bit. Yeah, okay. peel off it with a little fork and just get a little bit of aeration in okay, there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just right before you go, season it. Get a little bit of oil, a little bit of lemon, and you're good to go. Yes, sir. Finish up, finish up. Let's go. Guys, five minutes to go. Last five. Let's go. <laughs> That's ready, that's ready. Take your time, Reagan. It's going to be all right. Come on. Sav. Yes, Sav. Are your targets on point? I definitely feel like I missed the bullseye with Kennedy back there. Do you think so? Why? I mean, that dish looks good. So you're saying Kennedy is bulletproof? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Who's looking like they're up against it? We were looking at Lizzie's dish and just kind of wondering about cohesion with the celery and the bok choy and the couscous and the orange. A lot. But no. maybe I'm, I think in the box too much sometimes, so maybe she's just breaking out of the mold. We're coming down to the last two minutes, guys. Two minutes to go. Start plating. The jeopardy on plating fish always rises higher, right? Because the fish is not a no. big show in itself. So no. the saucing, the spoon work on the plate, it's the it's distribution it's of everything is fundamental. Yeah, and also right. checking the acid levels at the end, whether Absolutely. you spritz with a little bit of fresh lemon yeah. and herb. Come on. Speed up, Wayne. Taste everything, Lizzie. Let's go. He's, pu he's putting a whole tomato plant in the dish. 60 seconds to go, guys. Last minute. Come on. Come on, Reagan. Fish comes out the pan in the last seconds, guys. Come on. Good, Bryn. Let's go, Jennifer. Come on, Kennedy. Please, Colby, finish off. Let's go. Here we go. Finishing touches, everyone. This is so stressful. 10, Ten nine, 9, Come on, baby. 8, eight seven, 7, 6, there we go. 5, <sighs> 4, Three, two, there we go. one, and that's stop. it. Well done. Hands in the air. Good job. That was stressful. My hardest thing was trying to figure out which piece of fish I wanted to use. These are beautiful plates. Yeah. <sighs> Just a little embarrassed. I should have used some ingredients that I was more familiar with. I don't normally work with couscous. I've never worked with red snapper. I don't have access to saffron normally. I don't drink wine. I don't have the right elements coming together, and I am panicked in my soul right now. Right, all of you, well done. Now, in order to pick our top three dishes of the night, we need to take a much closer look at everyone's fish dishes. Shall we, gents? OK, 
Kennedy. Hello. Are you glad you kept the sardines whole? I think it shows a little bit diversity from everyone else. Thank you. Thank you. Reagan, so you went the uh, the route of the blackened salmon, huh? Yes. I didn't taste the fish. I've been only told what it's supposed to look like, and so. So this is the first plate of fish that you've cooked that sitting I've in cooked. front of you in your entire life. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. intense. All my other competitors' dishes look amazing. It's really hard to tell who's going to be in the top and who's going to be in the bottom. This is your first time cooking Branzino? It is. The judges are having to nitpick at this point because everybody's dishes are coming out so well. Wayne, the idea of blackening, you went with oil as opposed to clarified butter, which is the traditional route. Yes. So one misstep can really send you home. All right, Lizzie, you had the red snapper. Where did the wine wind up? Um, I put the wine in my orange saffron sauce. Did you cook out the alcohol of the wine? No, sir. So, James, you were given the striped bass. Uh, yes. Did you taste one of these after the pickling? I didn't have time to taste it. So you one. didn't taste it, and you put it on the plate without tasting it? Uh, yes. Grant, uh, mackerel. Correct. What is this supposed to be? Uh, so that's a broth I made out of both mackerel, mirepoix, and spices. Colby, halibut. Yes, chef. You feel you did justice to it? Yes, sir. I made four fillets so I could choose the exact right one to give to you guys. We'll see. First of all, I want to say well done to all of you because all the dishes look really good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on. Woo! Sav, MD, it's time to trade in those immunity pins. Make your way down and hand those pins over. Excellent. How, how was that? She said it was great while it lasted. Well, there you go. well done. Congrats. <laughs> Top great 10. Thank you. Thank y'all. Now, there are three home cooks tonight that Joe, Aron, and myself really felt that they highlighted the fish and made that the star. The first dish comes from a cook who's previously made it to the top by cooking seafood. Please step forward. Wayne. This is my moment. Winning today's challenge with a catfish would really send a statement that I really know what I'm doing in the kitchen and I'm here to win. Describe the dish, please. I've prepared for you today a blackened catfish over a spicy potato hash, a fresh remoulade sauce, and I pickled up some beautiful little green tomatoes. The blackening and the cook on the catfish seems to be spot on. It looks like a very appetizing dish. I think very authentic. Shall we? Look, there's a lot going on on that plate. A lot of textural differences. The pickling part is very smart. The potatoes are properly cooked and seasoned. The fish is cooked to perfection. Um, it's a good dish. I think all of the decisions you made as far as the garnishes were smart. It's acidic, it's spicy, it's balanced. This is really beautiful. Thank you. You've actually nailed that catfish. It's a tough one to get right, let me tell you. And tonight, you have taken that uh, to the next level. Really good job. Thank you. All right, so the second dish that we felt collectively made a splash tonight features some of the most refined plating of the evening. So please, come forward. Colby. This now makes three top dishes in a row, which is amazing, and I think everybody's starting to now see me as a threat. Never gets old. It's just proving my place in this competition. Please give us some insight on what fish you were given and the preparation behind it. I made harissa spiced halibut with a little bit of a butternut squash and carrot puree and a tabbouli. I just love the fact that you're stepping away from the obvious, those gold flavors. You said, you know what, I'm gonna go Mediterranean. And that is confidence. I think it's been one of your best plated dishes so far in this competition, because it's Thank elegant. You. Thank you, sir. Shall yeah. we? The tabbouleh with the puree together are magic alone. Mm, thank you. And then the well-seasoned and properly cooked fish just kind of add the richness that the dish needs. This is a, uh, a high-level, perfectly conceptualized and executed dish. Thank you, sir. Colby, this is a very intelligent dish. And I really appreciate the fact that you did not scorch the seasoning. It's there, it's present, and I love the choice of the puree. Halibut's a tough fish to get right. It's unforgiven, there's no fat. Yes. And it's, 
incredibly difficult to nail. Yeah, it's, it's good. I think it's one of your best dishes so far. Thank you, sir. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all very much. Okay, the final dish that really set the bar up high tonight was made with one of the smallest fish. Please come forward, Kennedy. I definitely got the fish that nobody wanted um, in the competition, but in my eyes, I think it's kind of an advantage for me to show the judges that I am the kind of chef that adapts to situations and I think quickly on my feet. Okay, Kennedy, so you got traded a fish. You started with yeah. the innocuous salmon and wound up with the salacious sardines. Tell us what you did with them. So I made a whole fried sardines over a fresh herb panzanella and a white wine raisin tomato sauce. Kennedy, you know, sardines living in France for three years and seeing how difficult they are to nail, I just love what you've done. This dish just screams unfazed. So the mistake here, I think, was Saf, <laughs> because no matter what they throw at you, you're going to come back. Yeah. Thank you. Can't wait to dig in. Perfect. <laughs> this is the kind of food I like to eat. Crispy, rich, acidic. Uh, everything is right about this dish. Quite delicious. Thank you. You took, uh, in essence, one of the most challenging fish to cook at the same time the most simple and did something that's uniquely Kennedy that equaled flavor. Thank you, chef. Sardines cook beautifully. They're moist, they're crisp. Panzanella salad, classic, beautifully done. I think the hardest thing here is you've got a big competition behind you with the top three dishes tonight, but it's just delicious. Thank you, Chef. I really appreciate it. Great job. Well done. Thank you. Welcome to the top team. Welcome to the top team. That's really hard. So three phenomenal dishes. Oh, I know me. my favorite. I think uh, I do too. So, uh, weighing for the catfish. I gotta tell you, as somebody that knows that food really well, I'm so impressed by him. I think that's the best plate that Colby's put forward with that halibut. Yes. Uh, yeah. It was very minimalistic. There's only three things on there. Yeah. And then the sardines. I mean, oh. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. Do you think? Got it? We agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, Colby, Kennedy, three outstanding dishes. And after much discussion, we, we all agreed that the best dish of the night was cooked by... The best dish of the night was cooked by... Congratulations, Wayne. Wow. <laughs> I just freaking won immunity. I mean, this is incredible. I've been wanting to win this pin for weeks and weeks now. And, you know, the rest of the competitors better take note because technically this pin puts me into the top nine. I've got like a one in three chance of being in the finale. Good job. Thank you. Well done. Amazing. Head up. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Sadly, there were three dishes that we felt were not quite the MasterChef standards, and we will be sending one of them home tonight. The first dish we must take a much closer look at is someone that started off with a big, bold idea, but missed the mark. Please, step forward. Grant. This is the first time that I've been in the bottom three throughout the entire competition, so this is new ground for me. This is a fish that I didn't want, that I didn't have originally. MD gave it to me. I tried to do as much as I could with the fish, but in hindsight, maybe I did a little too much. Describe the dish, please. I made a pan-seared mackerel over sautéed kohlrabi greens in a mackerel broth and smoked mackerel mousse inside a potato souffle. It looks like you didn't consider the fish you were using. This is how you would do a branzino or a red snapper, that kind of a filet presentation. But that is not how you would use a mackerel. So what's in the broth, please? Uh, in the broth, I started with a mirepoix, added garlic, the bones, and the carcass of the mackerel. You are a way, way better cook than this dish. Making a fish stock out of mackerel is unheard of. It's bad. I appreciate the flavor of the actual mousse, and also I like the fact that you charred the greens, but other than that, it's really sort of difficult to, to understand that, that broth. It's just a misfire. I think the sear and the torching of the mackerel is spot on. 
is cooked, it's glistening, but broth is a sort of mismatch. There's two dishes coming into one here that don't quite hit the mark. Boy, oh boy, did MD do one on you tonight, let me tell you, because first time in the bottom, and sadly, you've got one foot out the door. Thank you. OK, the second dish that we thought missed the mark tonight. Please come forward. Lizzie. I'm not surprised at all that my name was called. I definitely took on too much tonight. I should have stuck to some ingredients that I was more familiar with, and I'm really disappointed in myself. I made a pan-seared red snapper with an orange saffron sauce, couscous, charred bok choy, and some orange suppress. Visually, there's a, a good color on the fish, but it just looks unfinished. At this stage, you can't just give me steamed couscous. And I think this presentation is starting to show that the competition is running away from you. What did you do in an hour? This is a 20 minute dish. You know, there's really nothing to it. Shall we? Yeah. The red snapper is perfectly cooked. The couscous tastes like a mimosa. Like literally, it tastes like wine and orange juice together and raw wine at that. So big technical defect with the dish. There's just nothing going on here. It just tastes of pure orange juice. It's almost like you just splashed it on the plate. I mean, there's no creativity, no imagination here. Yes, sir. You can't just go and stick a fruit salad on the side of the plate with orange segments and expect to get away with it at this stage of the competition. So stop playing it safe because tonight somebody's going home and you may have just untied your apron. Yes, Thank you. The final dish that we need to examine further was made by a cook that appeared on the top early on in this competition. But tonight, they felt short. Please come down. All right. The final dish that we need to examine further was made by a cook that appeared on the top early on in this competition. But tonight, they felt short. Please come down. James. Hey. MD gave the mackerel to Grant and gave me the striped sea bass. So I got one of the best fishes of the night. Hopefully the judges see that I did it justice. I made a pan-seared crispy skin striped bass with pickled romanesca, cauliflower and parsnip puree, saute mushrooms, and roasted cherry tomatoes. You got handy to pass into the top 10 tonight because it's one of the most sought after fishes anywhere in the country. But it doesn't look like a dish that's thought out properly. It's just a bunch of different ingredients splash on a plate. Okay, here's what's wrong with this dish. A little bit of everything. The romesco is about an hour to 90 minutes away from being pickled properly. The tomatoes are about a half hour to 45 minutes away from being roasted properly. The fish is cooked twice as long as it should have been, therefore overcooked. So I don't even really know what to say. You've actually seasoned the fish nicely, but sadly overcooked. And you just don't serve roasted tomatoes with a parsnip puree. Tomatoes and parsnips will never work. They won't go together, period. Sadly for you, the best bite here is the mushrooms, which you know inside and out, and that puree. But that has nothing to do with fish. Thank you. Thank you. This is so hard. Yeah. First of all, that's the, that's the worst dish Grant's cooked so far. Yeah. Grant just got too clever. I mean, he fell flat on his face. Uh, Lizzie's was just too plain, right? Yes. Too plain. If you give someone an hour to cook fish, they have to cook something. And embellish with the pantry, lift it up. Yeah. Yeah. James, so far off the mark. It's, it's just ingredients on a plate that are all miscooked. It really demonstrates James' lack of knowledge of cooking fish yeah. and what to pair with it.
Grant, Lizzie, James, sadly, your three dishes were somewhat underwhelming, especially heading towards the top ten. After much discussion, Joe, Ron and myself all agree the home cook that will be leading MasterChef tonight is... James. Grant, Lizzie, please say goodbye to James and head back to your station. Thanks, brother. James, honestly, watching you come out your shell is inspiring. Food needs attitude. You've got that in abundance. I appreciate it. And just watching you evolve, I think, has been the most important thing for us three. Thank you. I love being here and um, definitely, definitely change and believe in myself more. You did yourself proud and the West proud. Come and say goodbye, man. I'm not ready to leave the competition. I was just right there to make it in the top 10. <laughs> it hurts, but I do have a lot to be proud of. <laughs> oh, James. Uh, when I first came into the MasterChef kitchen, I was under the radar. But now that I'm leaving this competition, I'm outgoing and have a boost of confidence. I love you, James. I'm going to continue cooking and, you know, making mushroom jerky. <laughs> Lizzie, MD, and Kennedy. You got to win. Work hard and bring it home to the west side. Bye, James. Next time, the top 10 welcome a MasterChef champion. Kelsey Murphy. <laughs> whose NFL stadium food fuels fans of the Indianapolis Colts. Your challenge is to elevate stadium food. Wayne, you'll get a chance to give one of them a timeout for five whole minutes. Gloves are off, right? With a quarter of a million bucks at stake? Yes, sir. Let's see if you got your dad's instincts. Look. Oh, my God. Flag goes to Timeout. Oh, Moment of truth. Oh, this is such a mess. It is chaos down there. He's going home. Didn't see that one coming. <sighs> Let the games begin. One potato, two potato.